this is the MX Platinum card and I'm gonna give you an honest review after using it for three years. This is a must watch if you're thinking about getting this card. A lot of people have been asking me about the American Express Platinum card and whether or not it is worth it. I've had this card for three years now and I wanted to give you my honest review after spending some time with it. I have had had this card when it still had an annual fee of $550, but since then the annual fee has gone up to $695. That's almost $700 a year. Since I still have this card, I still recommend it to everyone, right? Not exactly. Let's go over the key benefits with this card and I will share with you how useful it actually was. First things first, let's talk about the most important aspect of any credit card the welcome offer. When I signed up for the MX Platinum, I was welcomed with open arms with a juicy 100,000 membership reward point bonus after spending $6,000 within the first six months. And let me tell you, I was thrilled. You can still get this offer today, but keep an eye out because it has been known to give an offer out up to 150K. You can still find great offers on the Resi website where they offer exclusive restaurant experiences and top offers on MX cards. I do have a fill link down in the description if you'd like to support the channel, but only use it if it is the best offer that you can find. Now, let's be real. I probably wouldn't consider this card if it wasn't for the welcome offer. This is where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck and the quickest. But here's the thing. The value of your points depends on how you use it. If you are a savvy traveler who loves to research and find the best deals, you can transfer your points to travel partners and potentially get two to three cents per point. And if you're feeling fancy, you can even redeem business flights for up to 10 cents per point. However, if you're not a big traveler and don't have the time or interest in maximizing your points, then this card may not be the best fit for you. So to add on that, now let's talk about the perk of 5x membership reward points when booking flights through MX Travel or directly with airlines. As a semi-frequent traveler, I am all about maximizing my points. So I usually avoid paying cash for flights unless it is a business trip, which I can write off for taxes. However, since this card is for personal use, I won't be using it for business travel either. Now there might be some instances where the cash price for flights is a better deal, but for me personally, the 5X multiplier wasn't really that valuable. The next key benefit about this card is a $200 hotel credit. I must say that this is probably one of the most useful credit that this card has because you can receive a $200 hotel credit on prepaid hotel bookings through MX Travel. So to actually use this credit, you would either have to stay at least one night at a fine hotel and resorts property or in the hotel collection. With the hotel collection, it requires you to have a minimum stay of two nights, and with the fine hotels and resorts, you only need to stay there for one day. So to actually maximize this credit, it is best just to stay one day because if you were to stay more, that $200 hotel credit kind of gets watered down unless you were planning to stay at the hotel initially. With the hotel credit, you do get some complimentary benefits such as room upgrades when they are available, and a $100 experience credit that you can use for select activities such as dining or spa treatments. So depending on which hotel or resort that you book in the MX Travel Portal, these benefits can be more. Sometimes I have received up to $150 experience credit, but normally it stays around 100 to 125. With the hotel credit, you get some awesome perks like room upgrades if available, a $100 experience credit to use on things like dining or spa treatments, a daily breakfast for two, and that's not all. You get guaranteed 4 p.m. late checkout and noon check-in if it is available. I have found the best use of this credit is to use it at hotels in Las Vegas. The thing about properties and fine hotels and resorts is that they are generally pretty expensive. They are usually on the higher range of what you're trying to find in that city. So it's not uncommon to find rooms that cost $500 to $1,000 plus per night. So that's why I recommend using this credit in Las Vegas to maximize that value. The reason behind this is that you can usually find some really good hotels in Las Vegas under $200. This way you have less costs out of pocket, so it's almost like a free hotel stay with extra perks. Now, if you're a one night kind of traveler, this hotel credit will really up your stay. But if you love to linger, then this credit will just lower your overall cost, but making your stay a little bit more affordable. Personally, I love using this credit in Vegas. It's a quick and easy trip from where I live in California, and my wife and I can enjoy a luxurious stay with added extras without breaking the bank. Another key benefit is a 240 digital entertainment credit. This is where you get $20 back each month on subscription-based services like Audible, Disney+, ESPN+, Hulu, Peacock, Sirius XM, and the New York Times. Here's the catch though. You need to enroll through American Express in order to get this credit. 
And if you're like me, you may not even consider these descriptions without the credit. So for me personally, I really don't see this as valuable. The reason being is that I would normally not subscribe to any of these services unless there was a credit. I personally use Audible and Peacock since I do have access to the other ones from friends. But if it was up to me, I probably wouldn't even have an Audible subscription. Here's the thing, not everyone is gonna find this credit super valuable. If you are subscribed to these services or have kids, you probably get the most out of it. But if not, you might have feel forced to use this credit just to make it worth your while. The next credit that this card gives you is $150 for Walmart Plus. This is Walmart's version of Amazon Prime. I actually shop from Walmart probably once or twice a month where I can't find a product on Amazon or there was a better price. Again, this is just one of those credits where it was just there and I just use it whenever it makes sense. If you are one of the many people who don't have Amazon Prime, then this could be a valuable perk for you. Since I already had Amazon Prime and I really don't shop at Walmart all that often, it just wasn't that valuable to me. Now moving on to probably one of the most useful things that you have when you are traveling, which is lounge access. You get access to the Centurion lounges, which are MX lounges, as well as other lounges in their network and Priority Pass Select. So first, let's start off with the Centurion lounges. These by far are probably one of the better lounges that I've been to. They tend to have a much better food and drink selection, but probably the biggest problem with Centurion lounges is the capacity. So since having this card, I've only been to a few Centurion lounges. This includes Vegas, Denver, Seattle, and LA. So with so many card holders, the lounges can get pretty crowded and you may have to wait a while just to get in. That's what most people initially thought of why MX increased their annual fee to almost $700 just to defer people from signing up for this card, but that really didn't help. So they recently announced that they are no longer accepting guests of the card holder, which can be a bummer for those traveling with family or partners. However, you can add up to three authorized users for $175 or pay a fee of $50 per adult or $30 for children to enter the lounge. So depending on how often you travel, this entry cost may or may not be worth it. But if I travel more than twice a year and come to an airport with a Centurion lounge, then I may consider adding them as an authorized user. As for priority pass lounges, they're not quite as good as Centurion lounges, especially in the States. However, if you travel overseas, the food selection is much better and the experience is worth it. But keep in mind that there are other credit cards that offer Priority Pass memberships, so it is worth checking them out if the platinum annual fee is too steep for you. The next credit this card gives you is a $200 Uber Cash credit. Every month, you get a $15 credit with an extra $20 added in December. So you can use this for rides or cash, that's more than enough to get a ride or two and even grab some grub through Uber Eats. I find it very easy to use a $15 credit on a ride at least once a month or just food in general. Sometimes with Uber Eats, they do give you a promotion like 40% off of a specific restaurant. So using that credit on top of that coupon, you can sometimes eat less at home rather than at a restaurant. But if you do live in like a suburban or rural area where ride sharing services aren't that popular, then this credit might not do much for you. So moving on to the next credit, which is a $200 airline fee credit. This credit is for those instant handles that always seem to add up. Think about check baggage or in-flight snacks. Just be careful when you are paying with your card because if the airline accepts Apple Pay or something similar, you might not get the credit. So it's better to stick with the old fashioned paying with your card or registering directly with the airline. Choosing the right airline to use this credit can be a little bit tricky, but with a little bit of research, you can find one that works for you. In my case, I set it up for Frontier, even though it is not the best airline out there. The reason why I chose them is that I could sometimes book flights for under $100 and still trigger the credit. And if you're a fan of this kind of flights, Frontier's discount then may be worth a look. This will also trigger the credit. Another option is the United Travel Bank which is essentially acts like a bank account for United Flights. You can add money to it and use it to book flights and it will trigger the credit. This still works, but your mileage may vary depending on when you watch this video. Of course, if you don't fly United often, then this credit won't do much for you. The next credit this card offers is a $300 Equinox credit. At first, this credit was a little bit of a letdown with a monthly $25 credit, but they recently changed it to an annual $300 credit. If you are lucky enough to live near one of these fancy bougie gyms, you can get a month or two of a free membership, which usually costs between $200 to $300. Now, if you live in a city where these type of gyms are, then it would be nice to get a little bit of a discount. But I think for the majority of people who have this card, this credit is basically useless. This credit had little value to me. The next credit that this card gives you is a $100 Saks Fifth Ave credit that is split into two $50 chunks, one in the first half of the year and one in the second half. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably don't do much shopping at Saks Fifth Ave. 
So this credit can be a little bit of a headache to use. The only other way that you can save this credit for future use is by going into the store and buying a $50 gift card. The reason being is that the problem with this credit is that the selection of items under $50 on the website can be a little bit limited. I do have a shampoo by Jack Black that costs like almost $47. So I did see some value there. I know $47 for shampoo is crazy, but I know the shampoo bottle will probably last me more than a year. To really maximize the value of this credit, buying gift cards is the way to go. Just remember just to use it when you find something that you really want to buy. The next credit that you got is a $189 clear credit, which you can use annually. Think of it like a fancy smancy version of TSA PreCheck, except instead of going through the government, Clear checks your background and biometrics. Now, I have seen some folks with the Clear membership who can cut in front of the TSA pre-check line, which can be a little bit annoying, but hey, I really can't blame them. The only thing is, Clear isn't available everywhere. So this might not be the best fit for everyone. So for me, personally, I see little value in this. But if you are planning to travel soon and can't get an appointment with TSA pre-check or global entry, then this credit may come in handy. So that brings me on to the next point, which is a credit for global entry or TSA pre-check. So it's $100 for global entry and $85 for TSA pre-check. If you are into traveling internationally, I would highly recommend global entry. Since this gives you access to TSA pre-check and it also allows you to get into a special lane if you are traveling from Canada or Mexico by land for quicker entry. However, the thing is, is that there are a lot of credit cards out there that offer this credit and some of them have an annual fee of only around $100 as opposed to a hefty $700 fee on a platinum card. But here's the insider tip. If you add authorized users onto your platinum card, they can also receive global entry and TSA pre-check statement credit as a gold card member. And it won't cost you an extra dime. For me, I actually did use this credit. It's been a game changer for me, honestly. Even if I didn't have the credit, knowing how useful it is now, it is hard to go back. Now, let's talk about status. With the Platinum Card, you do get to enjoy exclusive perks at hotels like Hilton and Marriott, and as well as car rental services. Now, let's start off with the hotels. You get gold status with Hilton and Marriott. I really never thought much about hotel status since it really never brought me value, but I learned that I was looking at it all wrong. I was waiting for stuff to happen automatically rather than just asking. I recently did have the pleasure of experiencing the benefits of being a Hilton Gold member though. During a business trip to Austin, I stayed at a Double Tree Hotel that was a pretty good experience. I received a daily food and beverage credit of $15 per person. And since I'm always pretending that I'm traveling with two people, I got to enjoy a $30 credit for each night. What made my stay a little bit better was a couple days before my stay, I requested a room upgrade. And to my surprise, I was upgraded to a premium room, which was one level up from my original booking. This upgrade added an extra $20 per night to my stay, giving me a total value of $40. And the best part, I think that being a gold member helped me with the stay. There are other credit cards that automatically give you Hilton gold status with a much lower annual fee. But since the MX Platinum is like this all-in-one travel card, I think it's a pretty good feature. Now, let's talk about Marriott. While I did receive some benefits with Marriott Gold status, like better earning potential on my stays and possible late checkout, I have to admit, I wasn't too impressed. I've only stayed at Marriott hotels twice or three times at most in the past couple of years, and I really never had the luck with room upgrades. Late checkout was a perk, but I had success with this even before I was a gold member. Lastly, let's talk about car rentals. I don't really rent cars all that often when I travel, so the status with car rental services like Hertz wasn't really that valuable to me. I much prefer the simplicity of taking Ubers or taxis, but for those who do rent cars regularly, being a platinum card member do give you some discounts on rental rates. Now let's actually break down the cost to see if this card is worth keeping and it is something realistic for you. To start, there is an annual fee of $695. Year one is always a great deal since you get a sign on bonus, but once year one is done, this is where you really have to ask for retention offers. Now, recently I just renewed this card since I got offered 45,000 points after spending $4,000 within the first three months. Since I value membership reward points at two cents per point, this is worth $450. Now, this can be worth way more depending on how you use these points, but let's just subtract 450 from the annual fee of 695, which gives us a total of negative 245. Now, the next thing that I really do value is a $200 hotel credit. Right off the bat, you can deduct $200, so we're left with negative $45. So booking hotels that fall under the fine hotel and resorts category, you will automatically get a $100 experience credit, which typically you can use dining for. Now, this will bring my value up to a positive $55. 
Whenever I am deducting these points, this is the spend that I would use anyway. I would most likely go to Vegas at least a couple times a year. So depending on what credit that I have available, it will determine which hotel I stay at. On top of that, it really does push me to travel much more. I am a person who really gets caught up into work and the day-to-day -day that makes me forget sometimes that I need a break. So having some of these credits kind of forces me to travel, which is really not a bad thing. As for the Walmart Plus and entertainment credit, I value this at zero. Since this is something that I would not normally use anyways, I already have Amazon Prime and I rarely ever use streaming services. When it comes to lounge access, this used to be a real winner for me. I love traveling with my family and having access to free drinks and food at airport lounges made the trip so much more enjoyable. But with the changes to Centurion lounge access, I'm not really sure if it's worth to pay extra for authorized users. But on the other hand, we still have access to Priority Pass lounges, and while they can be a hit or miss, they still add value to our travels. Just imagine three adults, one infant traveling twice a year, that's six stops at a lounge. And let's be real, airport food can be expensive, so being able to add a bite for free is definitely a bonus. I estimate each lounge visit to be worth around 10 bucks, so that is $60 in savings just from this perk. Adding to our total value, which brings us to a total of $115. Up next is a $200 Uber credit. This one is a real winner for me. I like taking Ubers and I do order from Uber Eats at least once a month. So this credit just adds value to the card. So we're now sitting at a pretty $315 worth of value. Now let's talk about the airline fee credit. This one was a little bit trickier for me to value. As a savvy traveler, I tried to avoid any extras on a flight, no food, no drinks, and definitely no check bags. But since I can't use this credit for the United Travel Bank, I'm giving it $200 in value and bringing our grand total to $415. As for the Equinox, Saks, and Clear Credit, I gotta say, I don't really see value there. I would not normally use these perks anyways. But with the Global Entry Credit, now, that's a different story. Even though I have a few premium travel cards that offer this benefit, this was the first benefit that I actually used from this card. Let's just call it $100 for five years, which brings a total of $20 per year. That brings the total up to $435. Now, status, that is a wild card of the credit card benefits because it's hard to determine the exact value of this one because it's about the luck of the draw. Because will you get that room upgrade that you requested? There's really no telling, but it is always a pleasant surprise when it does happen. While the food and beverage credit at Hilton Hotels is a nice perk, I only stay at Hilton properties about twice a year. But if I do splurge on a stay at a high-end property like the Conrad, since I do have free nights, I estimate that credit can add an extra $100 in value. As for the Marriott and car rental status perks, I really don't see much value for those in my personal travel style, so I'll label those with a big fat zero. But let's just add $100 in value to our total, which brings us to a grand total of $535. I love to include the possibility of room upgrades, but since those aren't guaranteed, I just stick to the tangible benefits. So even with an annual fee of $695, I still come out with a value of $535. Of course, this number could change if I don't get the retention offer, but even without it, I still come out with a value of $85. The reason why I value this card at all is because I would use these benefits regardless. It's kind of like a coupon book for luxury travels. But whether or not I decide to keep this card really depends on only if I can continue to get the retention offer from year to year. If not, I might as well close the card and sign up for a different Platinum card. If you have the MX Platinum, let me know in the comments whether or not you will be keeping it for the long term. And if you want to hang out with me some more and learn more about credit cards, check out these videos over here.